good afternoon. The Committee on Water and Land is, going, is hearing notice of Wednesday, February 3rd. Uh, measures, uh, members, the first on the agenda will be the decision making on matters that we heard previously. And just some housekeeping announcement. Uh, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live, uh, streamed live on YouTube. And you will find links to viewing options for all other Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website for your information. This meeting uh, and the YouTube live stream event includes uh, the agenda, uh, as I mentioned, the hearing notice of the Waterland Committee at 1 o'clock. In the unlikely event, we have to abruptly end this hearing uh, due to major technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. on Friday, February 5th. And the public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Uh, for the, those um, participating remotely, um, all your testifying audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. A reminder, no time limit per testifier is two minutes. Um, Chair, at this time, members, thank you. Uh, the Committee on Waterland, um, we do have in person uh, with me uh, my Vice Chair, Senator Keith Agaran, and Senator Revere, remotely, Senators Favela, and Senator Misalucha. Uh, members will proceed then with the uh, decision making that um, we need to uh, address at the first part of this hearing. The first one, um, SB 137, relating to land use. Uh, and members, uh, I'm not sure if you got your recommendations earlier, if you had time to read it. Um, let's see. Uh, Chair's recommendation is we make uh, necessary amendments. And the first one is uh, SMA's uh, recommendation on page 5. Uh, on line 15, we'd like to insert after 201H-38, add 205-3.1. And Chair would also like to add that we did have recommendations for amendments from the Department of uh, Agriculture. Page 2, lines 10 to 19, the new language is bold and underlined. And I'll just read two sections, um, two sentences, rather than go deeply into it, where it says on line two, land acre areas greater than the 15 acres, but not more than 25 acres. And the second recommendation um, was on lines um, uh, 10 to 19, which included at three lands less than 15 acres in the agricultural district and you do have their recommendation as well. Um, chair, uh, any discussion? The chair's recommendation is to pass SB 137 with amendments. Any discussion? Any discussion out there remotely? Okay, having said that, Vice Chair, for the vote, Chair goes aye. All right, Chair's recommendation on Senate Bill 137 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Misalucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Your recommendations adopted. Thank you. SB 140 relating to community development. And this requires the HCDA to develop the TOD zone improvement program that we've heard. Chair's recommendation. Um, is to pass with amendments, and I would add that the recommendation um, is that on page 10, on line 17, insert after the word district or TOD zone. I'd like to add that the Attorney General's recommendation, we're taking all of their recommendations uh, to amend section 2, page 2, lines 13 to through 21, and this is amending section 206E-2 of the HRS, 
and also recommending that remove the uh, substantive provisions from the definition in section 206E-2. Another recommendation is in section three, uh, making, uh, proposing amending the sections 206E-3B, uh, authorizing uh, HCDA to consider matters affecting TOD zones. And their recommendations continue on to section four, recommending then adding a new section to the bill that adds a new paragraph on 19 to section 206E4, and also, um, as I did mention, SMA's recommendation is proposing uh, technical revisions to section four on page 10. This is from SMA, um, lines 13 to 18 for consistency with the amendments in section four. Also the recommendation on line uh, on B, is when, whenever the authority shall determine to undertake or cause to be undertaken any public facility as part of the district-wide or TOD zone improvement uh, amendments. Uh, any discussion on the amendments? Okay, seeing none, hearing none, uh, Chair's recommendation <coughs> is to pass SB 140 with amendments. Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair Inouye votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Mitsalucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Excuse me? Senator Favela? Aye. Okay, thank you. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Um, on SB 255 relating to commercial licenses, our chair recommends that uh, we pass this with amendments. Um, DLNR had some recommendations uh, in their testimony, and this is establishing the CMVL requirements and fees for rulemaking, and that included the lines in C, D, E, and F. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, <coughs> Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 255 with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Michalucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Senator Favela? Aye. Your recommendation is adopted, Chair. Thank you, SB 257, re, uh, relating to lease extension on public lands. Uh, chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, one of them is from SMA, and it includes technical amendments uh, for clarity and consistency, as well as the recommendation from DLNR to add mixed use to page one, line two, page two, line two, line 10, and line 16, uh, and also page five and 14, uh, some of the mixed use, ex uh, the amending uh, mixed use to mean a development that combines two or more of the following uses in single projects. Uh, that's all the recommendation for SB 257. Chair recommends that we pass this measure with amendments. Any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, SB 257 with amendments. Chair Inouye? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Michalucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Reservations. Senator Favela? Senator Favela? No. Okay, thank you. Your recommendation is adopted. Uh, thank you. Uh, SB 204 relating to aquatic resources. Chair's recommendation is to um, make the necessary changes recommended by SMA is um, to change uh, on page two lines 10 to 15 for purpose of clarity and consistency as well as, I think that's it for this amendment. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote on SB 204 with amendments. Attorney Noe? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Misalucho? Aye. Senator Riviere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 178 relating to driving on the beaches and this has to do with aquatic resources. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments and removing all our references uh, to Kekaha beaches because all of the beaches in Kekaha belongs to Kauai County and uh, for the pilot project at Polihali State Park, uh, permit fees should be deposited into the State Park's special fund. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. Uh, chair for the votes, SB 178 with amendments. Chair goes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Michel Lucha. Reservation. Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator Favela. Okay. Reservations. Your recommendation is adopted, Chair. Uh, thank you, members. Very important. We complete this portion. We'll immediately proceed on to the hearing notice of uh, today's date on new measures uh, on the agenda of February 3rd, Wednesday. Uh, first up is SB 473 relating to real property transactions. Uh, Mary Brigier uh, for Hawaii Realtors. Good afternoon, Senator. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. We have submitted our written thoughts on the subject. I'll just be brief and say that the, uh, there's numerous ways that disclosure is, al is already being made and we are in support of other legislation coming forward in this session for further disclosure to be made regarding uh, vulnerable coastal properties. But we do object to the idea of the recorded document being necessary in the Bureau of Conveyances. As you all, if anyone who's ever recorded something in the Bureau of Conveyances and then would like to have it changed, you uh, realize what a difficult process that can be. So we don't see the necessity for recording this document in the Bureau of Conveyances. Um, simple disclosure is sufficient and kept in all of our files. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for taking your time as well. Any questions of the Hawaii Realtors? Mary Bajir, uh, Senator Revere. Aloha, Mary. Hi. Um, Aloha, Senator. Hi. So if it's not recorded, would the, uh, the Realtors still object to this measure? No, we, we, it's, it, because it's a simple disclosure matter. There are several bills um, amending 508D before you this year, so I think we can all come to a compromise on appropriate disclosure. So I think the, um, the, the big concern is that a lot of, uh, we see it particularly in my district on the North Shore, where homeowners seem oblivious to uh, you know, th this particular fact that once their property erodes, it's not their property anymore, it's, it's public beach. And I'm just curious if you have any advice on how we might improve that awareness and recognition uh, for them? Because sometimes the seller disclosures maybe are not enough. Maybe a, a purchaser's acknowledgement of the, of the hazards would improve that. <clears throat> I mean, what do you suggest? The buyer, is, the buyer is currently required to acknowledge the seller's disclosure document. So um, I'm not sure. It just seems that we're, we're missing this. We see people buy a house that already has maybe a temporarily permitted uh, shoreline protection, and then maybe they sell it a year later, and then the next buyer buys it. And so we continue down this path where there seems to be um, kind of a, a, a forgetfulness <laughs> of, of, the, uh, of the law requiring who, you know, on who owns the beach at that point. So we're just trying to get to a better place where it's clear that people recognize the the hazard, the you know, buyer beware of, of buying shoreline. So anyway, we're, I think we're all interested in trying to find a better way to realize that and pass that on to buyers. I completely agree, Senator, but I don't think recording it in the Bureau of Conveyances, it's just going to be another piece of paper if they're not 
acknowledging your seller's disclosure statement, why would the document being recorded at the Bureau of Conveyances be? Is, is there a, maybe the realtors are required, or maybe any someone else involved in the transaction should keep a, a record of, of that disclosure? Who keeps track of the disclosures now? The the seller disclosures. We're required to keep all documents in our transaction for seven years from the date of recordation. So if this measure were changed to say that um, th this would be one more document for the realtors to keep in the file, you would not object because it's, it's already a document we keep in our file. I can assure you that, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very thank important you. document. Okay. I have a question. Thank you, Senator, Senator Algaran. So uh, going back to one of your statements, as you said this is difficult, if it's not in the land court, it's not very difficult to record something at the Bureau of Conveyances, is it? I mean, they record anything. You give them, you, as long as you pay your fee, they'll record it. <laughs> That's true. I understand your court, Senator. But all, anything in the chain of title is <clears throat> one more thing that can cause an interruption in a successive transaction. So it just doesn't, we don't but, see the necessity yeah. of it. But That's the really point. Good. I mean, it's the, dis the disclosure, if it comes up in the chain of title, will give notice to the next buyer. I mean, that's the whole point. The seller would already be giving that disclosure prior to a title report being provided, most likely. Well, that's, that's what this is trying to remedy. It takes, it takes that out of the equation where you have a seller who doesn't make that disclosure. Well, the seller, it's a question that's asked on the disclosure statement, and we also have it in our purchase contract. Um, whether or not a seller completes a disclosure statement, it's in every single purchase contract. It's part of our standard forms. We added that last year at our at the recommendation of many of the people here to testify today. Okay. Just just to add to, if you remember, Mary, um, I think it's already included in the HRS in uh, 408D. 408D. Yeah, 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 that it re it requires uh, f the uh, disclosure statement. Anyway, yes. just to add, and, and I think um, probably 474, the next bill, um, will probably um, be clarified as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, hearing none, we'll proceed with Dave Rainey, and his with the Hawaii Coral Reef Ocean Coalition in support. Um, Dave Rainey, are you online? Hello, Dave. Chair. Dave is not on the Zoom call today. Thank you. We'll continue on. I see Sam Lemno from DLNR. Thank you, Senator and um, committee members. Uh, would you stand on our written testimony in support of the measure? Uh, thank you so much for hearing it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for DLNR? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, Anu Hiro, uh, Climate Change Commission. In support, Anu, are they there? I I don't I, I don't. Hey, Chair, see, she's not on the Zoom. Yeah, call I don't see her, um, as well. Uh, the following has uh, sent testimony in support: Benjamin Sullivan, Kaina Hall, Chris Cofield, Jody Malinowski, Moana Brewer, Martha Randolph, Natalie Warner, Daniel Amato, uh, Juanita Kawamoto, Elizabeth Benishak. Uh, all in support. Um, we will then proceed, members, to SB 474 uh, relating to real property transactions. And just a matter, one second, looking for my testifiers list. Sam, Lemo, still there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 474. Um, you, you, you see our testimony. Uh, we, we also support this measure. There's eight measures this session. Um, we'd like to um, move something forward. Certainly there's room for um, discussion, discussing a, um, discussing a, um, how to bring it all into one measure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions of DLNR? Uh, Anu, um, 
she sends testimony in support. Uh, Anu, are you there? I don't see her. We'll continue with uh, Dave Rainey as well. Not there? Okay, Mary, Brigier Realtors. Senator, thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of this measure, Senate Bill 474. Um, the Hawaii Association of Realtors supports appropriate seller's disclosure on all matters that material and effect of property. So please pass this bill out as is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the Realtors? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, Chris Cofield, Emo Alliance in support as well as Jody Malinowski, Martha Randolph, Natalie Warner, Daniel Amato, Elizabeth Benishek. We'll proceed then with the next item on the agenda. SB 578 relating to commercial sharks, shark tours. It prohibits commercial shark tour operators uh, operations from operating without a permit, requires DLNR resources to adopt rules to regulate commercial shark tours, including adherence to the code of conduct. DLNR, Ed Underwood, aloha. Good afternoon, Chair Moore, Vice Chair Keith Aguilar, committee members. Uh, we stand on our testimony offering comments and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Any questions of DLNR? Uh, thank you, uh, Max. Okay, we got three, four supports. Uh, Max Phillips testifying in support for the Center of Biological Diversity, in support, Ted Bolan for Hawaii, Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Uh, for the Environmental Caucus of the, Depart the Democratic Party of Hawaii, Alan Burdick, and uh, Carl Meyer, <clears throat> an individual. Does anyone else here wishes to speak on SB 578? Any questions, members? I do have a question. Uh, <laughs> Senator Algaran. This is for the, the voting division. If he's still on. Ed, are you there? There he is. So, so Ed, if, uh, if this bill does not, does not move forward, um, and you say that you can be, it could be implemented by rulemaking at the department. So how long will rulemaking take? Well, I think we, the easiest way to do it would be to add it to the conditions in the existing permits when we renew. And we would need to work with um, our aquatic resources regarding their recommendations on how to interact with sharks. Because we just do the, the vessel. So that would be out, outside of the rulemaking, then you would just create conditions then without the rulemaking. That is correct. So that could be done fairly quickly if aquatic resources has the information, has some, has some language that they think would be useful. Yes. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Any? Yeah, yeah. I have a minute. Okay. Um, let's see. Final on the agenda of February 3rd, SB 690 relating to fishing conditions, the designation of community based subsistence fishing areas upon approval of the affected community. <clears throat> Uh, Rep. Um, Decoit, are you there? I know she has another hearing, so. Uh, Representative Decoit? De uh, there she is. Aloha. Uh, Aloha, Chair Inoy and Vice Chair Algaran and the Committee on Water and Land. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say mahalo for allowing me to speak. Um, I have submitted written testimony on the on the behalf of Senate Bill 690 in strong support. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge the fact that this bill was brought about by constituents that basically wanted their voices heard. Um, like the islands all across the Hawaii, Molokai, just like many of our communities, are unique and they're 
issues are different from everyone else. Okay. Um, in regards to the CBSFA and community base, the bill is basically written so that people's voices are heard. Uh, in December of this year, 2020, public hearing meetings had occurred. What was asked of us was to allow transparency within the community based subsistence fishing areas. I'd like to go to HRS 188-2.6. The definition of a community base was alarming to find by many that have asked for this bill of the definition of community. Uh, uh, Rep, I think, um, yes, yeah, sorry, but uh, we're on a time limit at two minutes. Yeah. Um, I suggest that um, if you can send us uh, your testimony, I, I think we do, we do have your testimony, right? So, so you have our testimony. Yes. Okay. Here. All right. Just like then we'll we'll proceed. Okay. So just elaborating on it, the reason for the bill is to allow those that have been silenced within certain yeah. communities. Yeah. I understand, Rep. But we're gonna to be heard. We're gonna stay so, with the two, with the two minutes. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if you have time. Right. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will proceed then with Daviana McGregor. Or Aluli McGregor, if you're in the same Ohana. Are you present? And that's in support. Uh, let's see. DLNR, Brian Nelson. Who's representing DLNR today? Yeah, Brian Nelson's here. Um, it's not letting me turn my video on, but uh, DLNR uh, stands on our written testimony, uh, providing comments available for questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair and Committee Okay, uh, the Chair, uh, because we have um, extensive uh, interest in this measure, any questions of DLNR at this time? Okay, Senator Revere. Hi, Brian, how are you today? Um, Good. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm just curious. I think the, the comments from DLNR was more or less that you, you, you have a process in place. It's taken years to get to this point, and this bill is probably unnecessary. Is that kind of the gist of your testimony? Yeah, I think, um, I think we, we would all agree that, uh, you know, you'd like to see the majority of a community uh, supporting a particular proposal, um, but, you know, the land board you know, they take that into consideration, just like this committee, uh, when you receive testimonies, um, I, I'm sure you, you look at the number supporting, the number opposed, but you also look at the substance, you also look at uh, the stakeholder and um, whether they'll be affected or not. So I think the land board, you know, through that process, there's already uh, a way to evaluate that proposal. And just logistically, I, I don't know how we would implement uh, this bill, it, it would essentially turn into a vote. Um, and I don't know how we would certify, uh, you know, an election process in terms of, you know, contacting every single community member <coughs> within 10 miles and seeing if they support or oppose. So uh, those are our comments. Um, happy to answer any other questions. Okay, no, th thank you. It was very okay. concise. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Brian, um, in your, I think it's in your rules with regards to community-based uh, fishing. And I think the language that you use is user. So user can mean everybody, uh, including users who may go to a certain area on anywhere in the state, can be uh, those from another island, which they travel, right? Because if one goes an example, so if one goes fishing in Hilo Bay, outside of Hilo Bay anyway, uh, and the weather is bad, then they'll go to Puna, or they'll go to Kona. Um, and so I think what my understanding is that um, it's beyond community-based. Um, so as an example, my understanding with Molokai's hearings when you conducted, the majority of the people that were there to testify were all from majority Oahu. So they flew in uh, and pretty much um, was overwhelming, I understand. Uh, secondly is, and reason I 
introducing this measure is to allow those that are affected, but how can we accommodate anyone? So maybe perhaps you have to look at, is it in the rules that you use the word user rather than something based wherever? Is, am, I, am I wrong? Yeah, I'd have to look at that particular rule. I, I don't have it in front of me. Maybe uh, Chair Case can weigh in on that. But um, yeah, uh, the, the community, I think the affected community is, is taken into consideration with these proposals. Um, you know, for the MOMI, the land board did particularly say that, um, you know, if it was to go back to the board that they wanted to hold that board meeting on Molokai itself. This is before all the, the COVID restrictions, um, which signals to me they, they want to hear from that direct community. But in terms of answering your question about uh, users and, and you know getting at this question of who is the community, um, maybe um, Chair Case could, could weigh in on that. Yeah, and let me, let me add um, further as an example. On the island of Molokai, all of their lands around the waters are accessible to a community. In my district in North Kona, from Mauna Kea all the way to the airport or Nauha, um, it's pretty much resorts. So, and, and the communities, uh, members who go fishing are not there because they're all Mauka. Uh, and so, you know, as an example, that's what we're trying to figure out, you know, um, how this impacts. And I can see where for fishermen, it's difficulty if we create rules per island, you know, separately, I, I think, I guess it would be difficult because all of our island geographic um, situation is certainly different. Chair Case. Yes, thank you. Uh, just uh, to clarify, uh, the, if you look at a historical context, in uh, traditional times, uh, governance was local. Your ahupua'a extended out onto the reef, and that was your, your area for gathering, and you, you had to ask permission to go elsewhere. Um, and the territorial government came in, they abolished that system, and went to a full public access. So. The rules in Hawaii are full public access. The rules have to apply to everyone equally. The community-based subsistence fishing areas, community-based managed areas, marine life conservation districts, uh, they're, they're all local um, uh, protected uh, means, means of uh, area-specific protective measures. In the CBSFA version, it's particularly proposed by the local community that is the most frequent user of that resource. The, um, and then just to, just to uh, touch on one thing, in the, in the public hearings that were held on these rules, there were statewide hearings, there was also a, an in, online, um, and then there was an in-person hearing that was also um, held on Molokai. So th there was, although everyone in the state is able to um, testify on this. There are uh, particular considerations for making sure the, the, the voices on Molokai get heard. Okay, any questions of the chair? Uh, online uh, committee members, any questions? Uh, chair is going to proceed with uh, the continuation of uh, the testifiers list. Uh, Kavika Winter in opposition. Is Kavika there? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Lemomi Khan. No. Kavika. No, Kavika Winter. I beg your pardon? Uh, Kavika Winter is here. Okay. All right, proceed. Thank you. So, okay. aloha, my name is Kavika Winter. I am the reserve manager at the Heia National Estuarine Research Reserve. I'm also intimately familiar with the CBSFA process, helping to establish and manage the CBSFA in Haena for its first 15 years. Uh, HRS 188-20.6, the intent of that statute is to affirm the Hawaiian rights. If the state would actually act on this, it would actually be a big step towards supporting Native Hawaiian rights. I'm, I'm deeply concerned because the proposed amendments um, 
to the contrary, actually erode Native Hawaiian rights by setting up arbitrary and capricious definitions of community that sets up undue burdens for the people of place and for the state. Um, I did submit written testimony and um, I offered some amendments if, um, so I think this bill should be killed, but if the committee does wanna move forward, I did offer some amendments, but um, after consulting with some Native Hawaiian attorneys, I would retract those proposed amendments and we would be happy to work with anybody who wanted to uh, work on an amendment. I have a good working relationship with Senator Riviere. So I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, any questions? questions. Uh, Senator Revere. Thank you, aloha. Um, how would you, uh, you mentioned it's kind of an arbitrary um, definition of community. Could you, could you elaborate on that um, and why that it's relevant to this discussion? Uh, certainly, be happy to. So you can look at community in several ways from an ecological perspective, from an environmental perspective, from a social cultural perspective and the 10 mile arbitrary and capricious uh, lines around a committee, community have really no foundation whatsoever. Uh, there are foundations for the concept of community in ecology and in uh, social cultural studies and I would propose that uh, any definitions of community would be founded in those concepts. So having to say a 10 mile thing, like if we were just to kind of overlay that for Ha'ana, how would that have impacted uh, potentially that? Because then you include what Hanalei and you include all kinds of other places right. outside. Uh, about miles of coastline, so it would have went all the way to Hanahola or so. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, we do feel that the people of the place uh, should have the strongest say in how we manage their place, which is the intent of the bill. Um, from or at least the original statute. Uh, we just have concerns about arbitrary uh, definitions of community that do make it unduly burdensome and nearly impossible to um, have one communities uh, enact on these statutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Chair calls on uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Oha Litani Peltier. Oha. Aloha, Chair Inouye, Vice Chair Keith Agaran, and members of the committee. My name is Leitani Peltier, Public Policy Advocate for OHA, testifying for the administration of OHA. Per our written testimony, we oppose this measure because it would create an additional hurdle to CBSFA designation that is not only unnecessary, but likely to be insurmountable as well. All CBSFA efforts so far have incorporated years, if not decades, of extensive community engagement, discussion, outreach, uh, meetings that have provided ample opportunity for input from any and all interested uh, parties. And so the CBSFA process already lends itself to organically revealing the affected community, uh, and then DLNR or DR or, or BLNR can use that information uh, as they weigh opinions and balance interests accordingly. Uh, the mandated referendum in this measure is not only unnecessary, it's also unfair and likely cost prohibitive, uh, a burden that would threaten to effectively shut down uh, what have been for many communities, years, if not decades, of sincere, voluntary, community-led study, research, outreach, discussion, consensus building. I'd like to emphasize that despite the ter uh, tremendous time and effort that communities have put into this process, it's been nearly 27 years since okay. the CBS. Thank you, uh, th thank you, Leitani. I have to cut you off, sorry. Um, we'll proceed then uh, on a continual basis with the, with the two-minute uh, uh, testimony. So we do have your members, we do have their testimony in our files. Um, <clears throat> Democratic Party, Limomi Khan, did I call her earlier? Uh, sends uh, communication in opposition. Uh, if I don't see her, I'll call on another. Kevin Chang, uh, Ku Aina, Ulu Ao Amo, <laughs> in opposition. Uh, Aloha Chair and, and uh, Senate Committee of Waterland. My name is Kevin Chang. I'm the co-director of Kuaina Ulu Aomo, which means grassroots growing through shared responsibility. We were created by the rural Native Hawaiian community groups and efforts that created the CBSFA law. Um, we I basically, uh, Leitani basically laid out a lot of the questions and I issues and concerns we have um, I think uh, another one is, is just that the communities that created a CBSFA law, in, in my view at least, 
are the most proactive and interested in working with our state to take care of our environment. This amendment will totally discourage their desire and the last two to three decades they have worked to create these rules for their community. And so I, I hope you will take that into account. I also wanted to add that I, I think the Aluli and McGregor op, uh, testimony was in opposition. And I just wanted to add to the, uh, for what uh, Chair Kay said. There is a recording of the communities of Molokai, and I think the LR can make that public. Okay, uh, fine. We got your testimony. Thank you. Time is up. Uh, one more uh, testimony. Uh, testifier Godfrey Akaka, Native Hawaiian Gathering Rights Association. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, proceed, Aloha. Godfrey. Godfrey Akaka, Native Hawaiian Gathering Rights. Okay. Your timing is going on. Native Hawaiian Gathering Rights Association. Uh, I don't know what the OHA guys was talking about, but or what island, but our community is so divided on the CBSFA. It's crazy uh, to the point where even violence is taking place over here. So uh, if you look at the numbers that was reflected on our DLNR report, more was in opposition of CBSFA than in support. And we're getting shafted over here on Molokai. For the last 20 years, CBSFA has been trying to move forward for example, OHA just put him on opposition, a testimony, saying that they vetted through the community, which is not true. I don't know what island they went. So we're getting issues over here. Uh, our The CBSFA infringes on our native gathering rights. It, it prevents families from going out to gather and practice our gathering rights. So I'm here open for questions, if you guys have any questions. <coughs> okay. Um, any questions of um, Godfrey? Um, Chair has a question for DLNR. Um, Chair Case, are you still there? Chair Case or Brian Nelson? Or oh, Chair, can you tell me for the committee's information how many um, of the CBA um, F um, have already uh, been approved and in existence? And what islands? So I, I, can, I can let Brian uh, Nielsen answer that, but but basically, under technically under the CBSFA rule, the Hi'ena community rule was passed, and then under a, not technically the CBSFA, but a similar process was a community-based rule at Kaupulehu that was passed. There are numerous other communities that are uh, in in the process of uh, working to propose uh, rules. We have. Uh, we have proposals uh, in the works uh, from uh, the uh, Mililii community and the Kipuhulu community, uh, as well as other communities who have, are not quite so far along in the process, but have been working on it statewide. Of those that are in the works, how many have uh, public hearings held already? Or all of them. So the, the the technical public hearing process happens once. Uh, so what what happens is once a, a community uh, wants to wants to propose a set of rules to DAR, it becomes a DAR rulemaking process. Right. And so DAR will review that proposal um, and and work with the community on refining it um, when it's ready for uh, and and often do its own scoping. But the technical uh, public hearing rule part. First, it goes to the land board for approval to go out to public hearing, and if it's approved to go out to public hearing, then it goes out to public hearing in the, in, a, in a formal process. So th there is a, a long engagement of sort of uh, informal uh, and pretty extensive um, community engagement, and then a formal uh, uh, hearing process. Okay, um, in Kaupulehu, which is my district, if I remember, I think that was established, was it in 2015 or 2016 or previously? There were, I think the lines were, if I remember um, the discussion, um, was 10 miles. So 10 miles from not inland, it, and correct me, 10 miles from one point, let's say from Kona Village all the way down to Nala or wherever it was established. Am I correct? 
Is there such a thing as a 10 I, mile I, I, already I think, established? I think the, well, there, there are fishery replenishment areas that were uh, set up by the, through a process that went through the West Hawaii fishery management area. The, the Kaupuli who rules, Bren, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it covers an area that is about three miles, is that right? I, I'm, I'm not remembering exactly, but it's about from Kona Village to Kukio and then out to a depth of uh, 120 feet or something. Um, so you didn't go beyond so the... So that's the direct area okay. that is covered by the, the rules. And the community decides where the lines or how far they should stretch. Is that correct? Well, that's a, or that's a iterative. recommendation after you it's hold hearings? It's a recommendation hearings. and then it's an iterative review process with lots of public input. And okay. There, there are changes to the proposed rule as you go through those, those processes. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the chair or sure. Brian? Uh, Senator Agaran. So, so chair, this is for um, Chair Case. The process, as I understand it, is, is that a particular group can make an application and they just, they have to provide certain kinds of information delineating the area that they want to have managed and who makes up their group. But is, what assessment does the department make as to whether they represent the particular community that actually uses the particular resource? Well, the, 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 the community that proposes the rule is, is a group of people who are very, very active uh, and committed to uh, protection and sustainable use of that area. They don't represent everyone. There are people that don't want rules or they want different rules. And so that's why we have government to, to have a process to hear those. Um, you know, our, our mission is protection and sustainable use. So we wanna make sure that happens. And uh, we, we do want communities who are particularly uh, interested in protecting their area um, to be able to make pr proposals. And then we, we have to review them and include public it's input true. from, from yes, anyone. Because I called her, she's on now. But uh, in terms of defining what a community is, it's really something that's ad hoc. It depends on the area. It depends on the resource. Yes. It depends yes. on the particular application, oh. right? Under here. Yes. But it's, it's a variety of people that, community is a variety of people that come together in, in a sense of common purpose. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I understand uh, Daviana McGregor, I called you earlier to testify. Are you there? Yes, I am. I uh -huh. apologize for um, having another uh, job responsibility I had to get on to and then come back. I'll proceed, please. Thank you. Um, aloha and mahalo. Uh, I'm opposed to this bill because it will kill the spirit of the bill that was established, a, a community-based subsistence fishing area that was inspired by um, a subsistence study that was conducted in 1993 on Molokai. The purpose is to uphold uh, traditional and customary rights and practices. So my, my issues with this bill is if it's to uphold and implement uh, traditional customary management practices, do matters relating to subsistence fishing and gathering, um, are they the kuleana of all the residents of a selected area? I think they are mostly the kuleana of those who engage directly <coughs> in subsistence fishing and gathering. Not all stakeholders in an area are necessarily residents of the surrounding community. For example, on Molokai, you have commercial fishers from Oahu who also use these oceans and have been included in the consultations, or landowners who may not live in the area. Um, would newcomers have the same basis to participate as those who've been gathering and monitoring and managing for generations? This bill would not help yeah. Molokai yeah. solve our internal and personality conflicts, but it will create problems and hurdles. Deviana, Deviana, so uh, time is up. Um, yeah. Can you uh, send in your testimony anyway? Because I know we did say we'll, we'll um, uh, take uh, testimonies up until this morning. so. Um, we'd we'd like we'd love to have your testimony, please. But uh, yes, we're limited I, I to time. 
Okay. Well, thank, I posted mine and Dr. Luis as All right. both in opposition. Okay, thank, thank you. you uh, Tier would like to mention also there were 20 that uh, wanted to testify in support. I understand they had technical difficulties um, with, I guess, IT or wherever, but uh, the note has come to me that there were 20 in support as well. All of these that I read um, is in opposition. Um, Shaila Moon, Scott Crawford, Damian Kennison, Kelson Poipoi, Max Phillip, Melody Aduha for the Caucus of the Democratic Party, that's the Environmental Caucus. Um, Jenny uh, Yagodich, uh, uh, Kalani Uwa, Ridi in opposition, Laa Poipoi, uh, Sterling Bear, Karen Poipoi, and let's see, uh, Mahina Poi Poi uh, is in opposition, Hannah Springer, um, Solomon Kaho'o Hala Hala uh, in opposition. In support, um, William Chang, uh, Carolyn Adolfo, Carl Adolfo, um, Faith uh, Tui Pulotu in support, Carrie Decoit, and Manuel Tollefson. Um, members, um, I think we will cut off already because we'd like to make sure that we go into decision making because of the time constraints the committee has uh, moving measures as well. Um, is there any um, questions you have on SB 690? Going once, going twice, then the committee will go into recess uh, to make decisions on the <coughs> bills before us. Good afternoon. The Committee on Water and Land is going into decision making on its agenda for Wednesday, February 3rd, um, on the first round of um, items uh, today. Chair's recommendation on SB 473 relating to real property transactions. Uh, Chair recommends that we defer this measure. Um, <clears throat> Any comments? Hearing none, uh, SB 474 relating to real property transactions. Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure, SB 474, um, with the uh, realtor's recommendations uh, on the effective date from January 2022 to, to um, uh, effective May 1st. 2022 in section four. Any discussions? Hearing none, <coughs> seeing none, uh, vice chair for the vote, chair goes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator Michelucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 578 relating to commercial shark tours. Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure uh, with amendments. Uh, there, uh, from SMA, technical and non-substantive amendments for purposes, purposes of clarity and consistency. Chair would like to add DLNR's um, recommendations is uh, to re remove the uh, quote, the code of conduct, which and the best management practices in pay, on page three, uh, seven A, as well as on page four, eight A. Uh, any discussions? Chair, sure, sure, I just have a brief comment, thank you. Yes, thank you Senator for, uh, Revere. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, I think the code of conduct, I think in the, in the end run is important, whether or not it be, needs to be in statute, uh, I, I'm fine taking it out, but I would encourage um, the committee report to include something um, asking DLNR to make sure that's part of the rulemaking process to establish um, the codes of conduct as, as 
you know, in the end. I think that would be more flexible and useful yeah. um, in, um, in the end product. The you, you want it to be rulemaking or just in fashioning conditions for the permit? Well, it should be clear. However, I, and I'll step back and say I'm not sure which is the most effective way, but there should be some sort of conduct and minimum standards, whether that's in this bill or ultimately established some other way. I, I, I just don't want that to get dropped entirely. That the, we, we need to keep that, be cognizant of that as, as this moves forward. Because I, I think your concern, though, is that you want to make sure some conditions are in there, right? Yes. And if you did rulemaking, I think you're looking at 18 to 24 months down the line. Uh, yeah, I don't right. think you want that. Correct. So That's correct. However we'll, we... Oh, okay. Cheers. Um, let's include that um, staff into the committee report, that particular okay. concern. But also to note that um, it's in the committee, uh, the testimony, the testifier's testimony as well um, regarding... D Dr. Meyer noticed the important, noted the importance of having minimum standards in that. Yeah. So however okay. we can achieve that, that's the point. I just want to make sure that's considered as this moves forward. All right. And then for clarity, um, staff, um, later on, can you kind of work out some language to work with my staff? Yes. yes. Yeah, at ASAP? Yes. Okay. Thank, uh, you. thank you. We'll include um, uh, in the committee report as well. So vice chair, for the vote on SB 578, uh, Chair's recommendation mm -hmm. is to pass with amendments. Okay, Chair. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Misalucho? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Uh, SB, the last item on the agenda, members, is SB 690 relating to fishing. Mm -hmm. Um, Chair's recommendation is to defer this bill, and I do want to iterate the, um, uh, this uh, concern as well that we've heard um, both sides of the issue. Um, it seems like for this measure, the definition seems to be problematic as well. Um, and it seems like DLNR um, is uh, a, the process is working, it's been out there for a number of years, um, and we also recognize there is a house companion, and mo so uh, let's see what happens um, with that uh, as well. So um, that's it for now. We will be meeting on uh, when, what is today? We're meeting on Friday, a uh, few bills. Okay, thank you members, uh, appreciate it. We beat the clock today. Aloha. This concludes the Committee on Water and Land.